tonight, the Congressional Black Caucus is holding a town hall meeting before its final jobs fair in the morning. It's part of a month-long series of such fairs across the country. In the past month, some members of the caucus have expressed anger and frustration about what they perceive to be President Obama's lack of a specific racial agenda. None more clearly than the host of tonight's final fair, Democratic Congresswoman Maxine Waters of California. Now, Waters is right when she points out the disparate impact of unemployment in black communities, which now stands stubbornly at an unthinkable, unacceptable, unbelievable 16 percent. But while she's right about the economic suffering felt in black communities, Waters' decision to lay the responsibility for that pain at the president's feet is more puzzling. Puzzling for two reasons. First, because double-digit unemployment in black communities is hardly a new problem. Representative Waters knows that it, this has been a tenacious issue for decades. But also puzzling for the obvious reason that Waters is a member of the Democratic Party. The president, also a member of that party, is not facing a primary challenge in the upcoming 2012 election. And common wisdom tells us that fierce criticism from inside the party could harm the president's reelection campaign and weaken his position in the coming months as he negotiates with Republican opposition. The damage is already apparent. A president without a base is on shifting sands, and this criticism has led many to ask whether President Obama has a problem with his base. After all, no group of voters supported the president with a higher proportion of their votes than African Americans. Other than his immediate family, the black vote was the most reliable constituency for Barack Obama in 2008. In fact, 95 percent of all African Americans who voted for president in 2008 voted for Barack Obama. So the Congressional Black Caucus is sometimes called the conscious of Congress because they are able to take tough public stances on controversial issues. But let's be clear, the CBC ability to be the national conscience is not so much the result of their personal courage, although many of them have it, it's a side effect of their electoral security. Congressional black caucus seats are some of the safest seats in the House of Representatives. Many members of the CBC have held office for decades and faced few strong challengers. Their security is the result of powerful racial solidarity operating in their districts. In fact, some CBC members have been accused of crime and fraud and still earned re-election by enthusiastic black constituencies. Indeed, African-American voters have shown them extraordinary loyalty, even when their incumbency seemed to deliver little in the way of economic benefits. The Congressional Black Caucus is, in fact, an object lesson in the importance of another kind of representation, descriptive representation. Their ability to speak up and speak out is made possible by voters who have affirmed for decades the importance of having representatives who share their cultural and emotional ties to black communities. And on that score, President Obama has shown as much commitment to African Americans as most members of that caucus. Remember when Hillary Clinton held a significant lead among black voters during the primary and media outlets regularly questioned if Obama was black enough to earn African-American electoral support? Remember when Reverend Jeremiah Wright dominated the news cycle and the question shifted to whether Obama was too black to garner white votes? And later when President Obama's opponents charged that he was a non-citizen, a Muslim and a terrorist? But no matter what the media cycle said about him, President Obama always identifies as a black American. President Obama's self-identification, his public recognition of the role of black people in American history, his embrace of black culture, all are readily identifiable aspects of this sense of solidarity. In fact, today, the president went on the Tom Joyner radio show. I know many of these viewers may not know who Joyner is, but in some ways, Joyner's show has eclipsed the NAACP, the Urban League, maybe even the black church as a primary mobilizing agent among African-Americans. If you want to talk to black folks, Joyner's show is a good place to do it. And today, while talking with Joyner, the president discussed how he personally draws strength from the history of racial struggle in America. That famous Norman Rockwell painting mm -hmm. right outside the Oval Office of Ruby Bridges walking to school. And we pass that every single day. Uh, you know, she's a little six-year-old girl surrounded by marshals. 
uh, going into that uh, that schoolhouse uh, all by herself. A friend of mine framed uh, the original program from the March on Washington, mm-hmm. and you know, so they're they're reminders uh, as we go through the day, and, and we're working hard here to make sure that we're putting people back to work and getting the economy going again. That. Uh, you know, we stand on the shoulders of a lot of people who made a lot of sacrifices, and it, it's important for us to make sure that we're following through on those commitments, even if it's slow and frustrating sometimes. So despite the claim of critics, President Obama embraces blackness. Despite the media discourse, public opinion polls continue to show that the vast majority of African Americans embrace him in return. This does not mean that President Obama should be given a free pass. He has a responsibility to work aggressively to address the economic crisis in black communities. But the responsibility is not his alone. Members of the Congressional Black Caucus must also be held accountable for the conditions in their districts. Taking the right position is not enough for the president or for these members. Creating tangible results is the relevant test. But even more important, all members of the U.S. Congress no matter their race or party, have a responsibility to labor tirelessly to create jobs, reduce inequality, and create more just outcomes. The challenges facing black Americans are the challenges facing all Americans. Our struggle requires all of us together to do the work.